Today we're going to upgrade my Palette 2 to the Palette 2 S. If you don't know what the Palette 2 is, it's a multi-material unit you can mount on pretty much any 3D printer to do multi-material or multi-color 3D prints by splicing filament together. Now when the Palette 2 came out, I have to admit, I was one of the users that had some struggles. It was mostly with firmware and software, but there were a few hardware challenges along the way, like the thumb screws or the filament runout switches. But Mosaic Manufacturing has listened, and they've came out with a Palette 2 S version that solves a lot of these problems. They also have an upgrade kit so you can get your current Palette 2 up to that latest version. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to check out the Palette 2 S upgrade kit and get my Palette 2 up to the S model. So let's get started. So opening up the box, here's our Palette 2 S upgrade kit. From what I understand, the only tool you need to complete this upgrade is the little torque bit screwdriver that came with your Palette 2. Hopefully you still have that laying around. Opening the box, scratch what I just said because they have given you another one of these screwdrivers. Excellent. We've got some stickers. We have a new splice core. I understand this has been updated. We've got some replacement splice tubes. We've got five new extruder arms, one for each filament and then one for the outgoing filament. A whole new bag of thumb screws. Mine were just a little bit short. Hopefully these are a bit longer. All the replacement filament runout switches. And this looks to be a replacement sensor for the one that's right before the cutting wheel. So that's everything in the box. Let's get to taking our Palette 2 apart. First thing we'll do is remove our ingoing filament cover. These five thumb screws right here. We can pop that off. Then we're going to replace all four of these switches. These are the switches that detect when the filament's present. So we'll just remove all four of these screws. And we can start lifting these switches out. They don't have a very long lead on them, so kind of be careful. You might want to put something in here to keep that wire from falling back in. And then we can unplug the switch. Be careful, those plugs are on those switches pretty tight, but you can wiggle them loose. And we'll swap in our new switch. Then we'll move on to the next one. All four of our new switches are in, we can go ahead and put the screws back in. Now all the screws are in, just make sure this little plastic pin is lined up on the PCB and you should be all set with this step. Next we're going to replace all the four incoming filament driver arms. You just need to remove this screw from each arm. Be careful when you pull these out, that spring is under a bit of load, you don't want that to get away from you. I like to compress it just a little bit and lift it out on the idler side. We've got one out. Two out. Three out. And the fourth one's out. Now when we put the new arm back in, we're going to use that original screw, the same screw we just took out. We'll take the new arm, put the spring on the button right here. We'll compress it a bit inside the housing and just lay it right back in here. You'll have to hold it down a bit, but then you can just replace that screw that we just took out. After you've replaced it, make sure you can move it just a bit and it's lined up. And then we'll repeat this step three more times. Just a note, there's no right or wrong way to put these arms on. They can go either side and they're all identical. And all of our new idler arms are on. Next up, we'll replace this homing switch. We can take this thumb screw out. To remove this cover, you have to spin the blade till you're on the open side right here, and then you can lift it out. Then we can remove this screw to remove this homing switch. We can lift our switch out. Be careful around that blade. It has a much longer lead on it, so that's nice. We can just pull the sensor off the plug, 
We still don't want to lose that plug down inside the unit. Old switch is out. We can plug our new switch right back in and go ahead and screw it back in place. Remember, you have this plastic pin over here that lines up on the PCB to make sure it's in the right spot. While we have this cover off, let's go ahead and remove the splice core. This is one of the ones that I had a problem with the thumb screw not being long enough. I actually had to use just a regular M3 screw. So I have to have a wrench to back that out. On yours, you'll just have a regular thumb screw so we can take the old splice core out. And the new splice core should be ready to just drop right in. And the new thumb screw they give you, the chrome one, will hold your splice core on. They're all just a little bit longer, these thumb screws, so they're gonna work quite a bit better. So the splice core's in, we're pretty much done with the incoming portion, so we can go ahead and put these covers back on. We'll slide in the homing switch cover. We'll use one of our new thumb screws here, and we'll put on our incoming filament cover. Five new thumb screws there. Now the instructions for the upgrade kit don't mention it, but this arm for the outgoing filament and the sensor for the buffer, they're exactly the same parts as what we replaced down here. And they give you those parts in the upgrade kit. So just to make everything the same, I'm gonna go ahead and replace those two parts as well. And I wanna remove this cover and put in the new thumb screws anyway. So we'll take these three thumb screws off, take the cover off. It's also a good time to make sure there's nothing running around in here that might mess your prints up. We'll remove the screw from this switch. Slide the switch out. This one is by far the most challenging that I've run into. The switch is off, but it doesn't give you a lot of room to pull that plug out, so you kind of got to be careful here. We'll hold that plug out just a bit, and we'll slide our new switch on. And we can go ahead and replace that screw. And we'll go ahead and replace our outgoing arm. We'll just back this screw out. Remember, it's under tension. Pull our old arm out, and we'll put our new arm in. And replace the screw. New arms on, we can go ahead and replace our cover and reinstall the three new thumb screws. And the upgrade is complete. We can go ahead and throw our cover back on. Now let's go check it out and see if we need new firmware. So the hardware portion of our Palette 2 S upgrade is complete and it was actually pretty easy to do. And I don't think you necessarily need to upgrade to the latest firmware depending on what version you're on, but we might as well go ahead and update it anyway. So let's work on that now. So the Palette 2 is powered on and plugged in USB to the computer, and the easiest way to upgrade the firmware is to jump on the Mosaic site and get the firmware upgrading tool. You can download that right here. I already have the tool, so let's just open it up. Update firmware, make sure your palette's turned on and connected USB. Next. So we're just gonna hit install latest. There's three sections to the upgrade. It'll take just a little bit, about 10 minutes or so. And our upgrade is complete. Go on and check out the version. We can go to settings. About. And we're now on version 9.2.9. .9. So that's it. Our Palette 2S upgrade is complete and we're upgraded to the newest firmware. Now, one thing to mention is the splice tube, the tube that's inside your new splice core. The ones on the Palette 2S are just a little bit different than the original ones. I don't know if they're compatible backwards and forwards, but you might want to keep them separate because they do look a lot alike. Now, Mosaic Manufacturing does have a guide on how to complete this upgrade but it never hurts to run through it with you all just to make sure there's no gotchas along the way. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.